It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Joining me today in our Baltimore studios is the vice presidential candidate for the Green Party. And uh, we're going to dedicate this segment to Latin America. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. Let's uh, look at what's happened in Latin America recently with the um, uh, removal of a democratically elected President Dilma Rousseff in, in Brazil, uh, with Venezuela in a great deal of turmoil in terms of the presidency facing a recall referendum. And then we see uh, countries like uh, Argentina and uh, Colombia um, aligning with the U.S. here, sort of throwing decades of left governments in uh, Latin America into some turmoil as a region. Uh, at the same time, we see you know, relations with uh, Cuba uh, reinstated, which is a good thing. Um, but uh, the region is in turmoil. Mm -hmm. Now, the Organization of American States, the OAS, uh, was founded on the principles of regional unity and human rights and uh, democracy and, and so forth. But the United States has historically used the OAS to flex its muscles in the region. Yes. And, uh, and uh, one example of this is uh, the OAS to, to date has not issued a single um, negative comment on uh, what happened in Brazil, yet it's issued a number of statements on Venezuela, which has upheld uh, democratic rights of its citizens without question to the point of, you know, two very large demonstrations were held just a few weeks ago, one in support of the Maduro government, one against the Maduro government, but it happened very peacefully. In fact, the, uh, the opposition's uh, demand of bringing about a uh, recall referendum on the president has been accepted and they're going through with it. Yet the OAS has issued a number of negative statements about uh, Venezuela needing to uphold the democratic rights of its people and honor the, um, the recall referendum and, and process it quickly so that the uh, opposition could come into power. Um, if the Green Party is elected, how would you deal with the OAS? Well, we would, uh, the, the, the US, one thing we would do is to uh, sign the American Convention on Human Rights, something that the uh, US has failed to do throughout the history of the OAS. Uh, secondly, we would, uh, I think it'd be clear to all states that the uh, period of, of subversion, of, of right-wing uh, uh, mischief uh, was in fact over. Uh, so we would, uh, 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 honor the alternative structures that have been set up in, in Latin America. Uh, we would uh, suggest that if there was a change in the makeup uh, and practice of the OAS, uh, that uh, perhaps those structures can be merged or they can stand alone. Uh, we would uh, strengthen uh, and, and provide additional funding for the uh, OAS's uh, Human Rights uh, Commission that's been defunded. Um, and so we would indicate that uh, in, uh, in Latin America, that this will be a new day uh, for the, uh, uh, the up, 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 uh, adherence to international law uh, and for a respectful relations between all Latin American countries uh, and the U.S. Our uh, border partner, Mexico, uh, had just received Donald Trump um, to come and visit. And... Uh, and following that, issued some very controversial statements in terms of his intention to uh, build a wall on the border of Mexico and the U.S. and build a bigger wall and so forth. But, you know, walls already exist. Uh, intense security, uh, spending billions of dollars have already been built and is being executed, yet people still are trying to make it across to the United States. What would be uh, your solution to the immigration uh, or people coming illegally to this country um, yeah, if you were ruling party of this country? 
we would, we would uh, address the kinds of issues that are pushing people out of their countries, um, where people feel compelled to have to leave and try to sneak into the U.S. in order to survive. So the, the neoliberal policies that have resulted in the devastation of so many economies um, will have to be reversed. The kind of, of social uh, contradictions and violence we see in places like El Salvador and Guatemala uh, as a result of, of the draconian uh, deportation policies that took place that ended up with a number of, of gang members in these various states who brought the uh, their, their skills that they learned in the U.S. back to their home countries. Uh, we have to work with those governments to try to address some of the social ills in those countries to allow for those folks to be reintegrated into society. So solving the, 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 con the social and economic contradictions of Latin America will then directly begin to address the issue of migrant flows into the U.S. as opposed to this notion of, of walls. You have to have build a wall where you're committed to maintaining the economic status quo. Uh, our government will be committed to altering the economic status quo, shifting power back to the people, not only in the U.S., but throughout the, the hemisphere. Now, Mexico uh, poses certain issues for the United States, and NAFTA, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement, is a particular cause of some of the problems that Mexico is facing and what Mexico and the U.S. is now facing. Um, would you stick with those agreements and how would you renegotiate it if you had to? Well, NAFTA is, part of, is a central part of the neoliberal um, uh, configuration. Uh, so the, uh, the agreements that allow for the free penetration of uh, agribusiness into uh, the Mexican, Mexican countryside uh, will be something we have to take a second look at. That uh, you cannot talk about migrant flows or be concerned about migrant flows while you have policies that are resulting in the devastation of rural communities, the displacement of farmers. Um, so those policies have to be reconciled. So we would have to take a serious look at, uh, at NAFTA and there will have to be some uh, renegotiations, especially as it relates to uh, environmental issues and the rights of workers. So all of the neoliberal um, uh, agreements uh, will have to be scrutinized very seriously uh, and altered uh, for uh, a green government uh, that is committed to uh, bringing about a new configuration of relationships uh, and committed to real social justice, not only in the U.S., uh, but throughout the world. And uh, one big question is, of course, uh, the position of the Green Party when it comes to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, give us a sense of where you are at, and uh, uh, Hillary Clinton has distanced herself from the agreement at, after initially supporting it. Um, Donald Trump says he won't have anything to do with it. Uh, where do you stand? Uh, the Green Party is, is adamantly opposed to this um, agreement. It is a, um, a, a boondoggle. It is something that's only going to increase the power of the uh, financial and corporate elite. Uh, it will undermine the rights of workers in the various states that are part of the agreement. Uh, and we say to uh, Hillary Clinton very clearly and simply, if you really oppose uh, TPP, uh, then as the uh, nominal head of the Democratic Party, then say very clearly that you will oppose any attempt to pass TPP during a lame duck session of Congress. Say that, make that comment, make that statement if you're really serious about opposing TPP. We don't believe she will. Uh, we don't believe she's really opposed to it uh, because as a neoliberal uh, capitalist, uh, ideologically, uh, she uh, does see uh, that agreement as the gold standard. Uh, and if she's elected, uh, she will find a way to begin to, uh, if it's not passed during the lame duck session, uh, they will begin to move toward passing that in whole or in parts. How does TPP compromise Green Party objectives when it comes to the environment? It is, uh, it is a devastating agreement because it uh, shifts the ability to control a national uh, environments uh, to to the uh, to the corporate sector, 
uh, it, uh, uh, any uh, laws that may be passed to protect uh, the integrity of, of a national environment uh, can be undermined uh, in this investor state uh, settlement process where corporations can claim that that, uh, that law uh, impedes their ability to uh, make a profit and they can sue a state. And for smaller states, uh, that could be quite uh, devastating. But in this case, you have a situation where corporations can sue the U.S. or sue, sue states uh, in the U.S. that might attempt to try to protect their domestic, uh, uh, industry, domestic agriculture industry from uh, cheap goods coming in from uh, one of the uh, uh, partner states in this TPP. So it is a, uh, I mean, the environment, the economic relations, all of this is in play. All of this is undermined by this agreement. Um, and so that's why we oppose it, and that's why we make the, we, the call to uh, Hillary Clinton uh, to also uh, oppose it in a serious way by uh, forbidding other Democrats to vote for it in a lame duck session. Ajayma Barak, I thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. And all the best with the campaign. Yes. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.